All right, everybody, welcome back here to this Nirvana album review series. Of course, last time we took a look at their first album. It came out in the late 80s, of course, uh, 1989 to be at Zach Bleach. And we have already have quite the evolution of sound here for the band. Um, going with 1991's Nevermind. Very iconic album cover. Baby diving for that dollar bill, right? <laughs> um... Just, uh, I mean, this album right here is just the one that, you know, this is like easily the biggest grunge album of all time and really helped the whole grunge movement, it, you know, if it already wasn't taken off with like Alice in Chains facelift and Bad Motor Finger by Soundgarden, this one, you know, pushed it to that next level, getting it popular on a whole um, different scale, uh, just reaching great heights. And one of the, I'm pretty sure it's one of the best-selling albums out there uh, of all time. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's up there. I've, if not of all time, definitely the 90s. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, talk about the evolution in sound. We've already got um, the production on this compared to the last, to the, to the debut album is freaking phenomenal. Um, I mean... We're talking very clean recordings, even though while still being heavy, just you can hear every instrument very clearly. Just incredible production. And we'll, well, you know, I mean, while we're talking about that, we'll talk about, of course, the new lineup here, the most iconic lineup with Kurt Cobain on vocals and guitar, just like, you know, before. And same with uh, Chris Novoselic on bass, of course. And um, then this time with a drummer. We've got Dave Grohl, who would, you know, later on go to form the Foo Fighters. Um, and he does some backup vocals on here, which we'll get into uh, how good they are, really, and how, how well they blend in with Kurt's vocals. And the other guy on guitar who was on, doing rhythm guitars on Bleach is now out of the picture. So we just got that classic three-piece uh, lineup here for these guys. So, of course, we started off with the opener, and I think it's a great choice for an opener, kind of you know, sets the mood for the album, gets, you know, just a good upbeat one, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Now, I understand this is a, a good song and songwriting and everything, but, I mean, it's one I've heard so many damn times, right, that I don't really need to hear it again. I mean, it, it, I've heard it so many times. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and call it my least favorite off here. Um, but it, it's one of those cases, kind of like, you know, when we talk about the Black Album, Metallica, uh, you know, Inner Sandman, I know it's a it's a good song, especially the first time you hear it, you know, if it's new to you. But, you, you know, you get to a point where you've heard the, it so many freaking times, it's just, it's like, okay. Um, well, and, and even, you know, before I was really all that tired of this song, I, I've never, it's never been one of my favorites off here to begin with. But, you know, it's hooky. It's got that a very iconic song of the 90s. Then we go with one of my favorites on here, actually, In Bloom. And we've got such a really cool bass groove going on from uh, Navaselic here, which he he does a phenomenal job throughout this album. Um, really, really hooky chorus um, that, you know, has got that kind of sing-along kind, of, uh, kind of vibe to it. Um, even says that in the, in the lyrics, you know. Sings along to all her pretty songs or whatever, right? <laughs> it's got that kind of feel to it, though. The kind of sing-along, um, you know, hookiness to it. So In, in Bloom has uh, always been one of my favorites off here. I love the bass line going on. Um, that's something that we'll see is very consistent on this album. It's just awesome uh, bass lines that uh, Novoselic wrote for this. Then we go with Come As You Are, another just massive hit, which really most of these on here were massive hits, even in Bloom um, that we just talked about. But Come As You Are, love this one. It's got that watery kind of feel to it, that, that effect on the guitar, um, which really kind of fits with the album cover being, you know, underwater and everything. Um, but, yeah, this uh, the, the very, very hooky um, riff that they got, even though I know that, you know, they... It's kind of like a slowed down version of that Killing Joke song, 80s. Um, but, you know, those are both good songs. Uh, th this is a great one. Um, I love it. 
it's it's always been uh one of my favorites from from this album for sure uh, i just love the kind of moodiness to this one and you know and, and the kind of breakdown where you know he's singing i don't have a gun you know and the the harmonies um between dave Grohl and kurt cobain's vocals really shine uh during that like with those background vocals that's something that i think is kind of um underrated as far as uh this album especially goes is like the vocal harmonies that Dave Grohl and Kurt Cobain are, are getting. It's not like a vocal harmony where they're like on the same level of of being, you know, of, of being dynamically output. You know, Kurt's are definitely more turned up, but the back, but the mixing on it is uh, what I'm trying to say. Pretty much is like the mixing is not like an Alice in Chains thing where Jerry and Lane are pretty much like the same. Uh, level of volume and, and range, uh, dynamic range. While on this, I mean, clearly Kurtz is louder, but I mean, you can hear it blend in. Dave Grohl's like higher pitched uh, background vocals in the back, which really helps on, on this song in particular. Then we've got Breed, which is a pretty fun one. This one is uh, kind of a punkier sound and one really fast paced. You know, you get some to hear some uh, how tight of a drummer Dave Grohl really is on like a fast paced track like this. Really fun one. Always like this one. Um, wouldn't say it's one of my favorites off here though, but I mean, it is a fun, upbeat, just quick punch to the face of a, a you know, of a song. Uh, definitely dig it. Then we go with Lithium. Uh, another just massive hit here, man, I'm telling you. Uh, and this one, love the bass on this one. I, I remember learning this one really early on and when I was learning to play bass um, a long time ago and I remember learning that little lick you know that's throughout the song and really really digging it this is another one I like kind of the moodiness behind it and everything then the chorus while it's hooky and everything uh, you know it, it is kind of like okay they're not they're just singing yeah yeah you know and it just it, they're just singing yeah over and over again so it's kind of like okay um, which, you know, isn't a terrible thing or whatever, but that's like, the chorus is like my least favorite part of the song. I even like the breakdown that kind of comes after that. And then, but the verses are really uh, where it's at here with that cool little bass line, especially after um, the first breakdown that happens. And then you get like, everything goes silent, but that bass and the drums, really, really cool song. Lithium is, is awesome stuff. Then we've got Polly. Just a straight up, you know, uh, acoustic song pretty much here. And uh, really powerful one if you hear like the story behind it, you know, about, uh, it, you know, it, it ain't somebody talking to their bird. Like it's kind of leading on, right? It's, you know, about a, uh, a, a girl who was kidnapped and raped, tortured, terrible stuff. And she managed to get away um, because the, you know, the kidnapper got, he, he got caught off guard, you know, and just got cocky about it. And she, she managed to escape. So, you know, at least there was a happy ending to the story, right? Her getting out of there. Um, but really, really dark song. And one of my favorites off here. It's very simple. Just a few chords the whole, you know, the whole time. Um, but just the, the weight of the story and everything. The lyrics are brilliant stuff. Great, great song. Then we've got Territorial Pissings. that kind of starts off with this kind of funny sounding, you know, uh, Everybody get together or whatever he's saying, right? And that's uh, Novoselic on the bass saying that, you know. Um, and it it's a fun one. Uh, really, really heavy one, especially like, uh, you know, near the end, you start, you, he starts like screaming up a storm. Uh, Kurt does with just his really unique kind of raspy vocal. Um, so th th this one's a good one. Um, one that has actually grown on me, uh, for sure. I mean, I used to that, I used to probably say that was one of my least favorites off your territorial pissings, but um, I'd say it kind of moved up for me, and, I, and my appreciation for that one's grown. Then we go with Drain You. Really, really good one. Uh, the lyrics are really cool on this one. Um, I mean, which Kurt was just pretty much a poet, you know, with these lyrics he was writing. Um then we've got the, I love, love, love the chorus. Those vocal harmonies come into play again, where you can hear Dave just kind of faintly his high, uh, doing the higher range vocal in the background, mixed with Kurt's, you know, darker, deeper, um, more monotone kind of vocal. 
uh, on here that just blends to this really cool uh, sound that they got going on here. Um, and just a really kind of upbeat verse and everything with that kind of darker chord. So Drain You is one of my favorites off here. I, like, absolutely. I've always been a fan of that one. And this one probably is my favorite right here. Uh, track number nine, um, Lounge Act. This one has always been like top of the freaking shelf Nirvana for me. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. I love that bass lick, of course, going on at the beginning. And kind of kind of a punkier sounding one too. Uh, and with just such a cool groove to it and a very, very hooky chorus that just kind of plays along perfectly. And, and, and you know, the best part comes... Uh, because, you know, the for the first two choruses, or two or three, because, I mean, it's a real short song, uh, real short and sweet, but, um, you know, they're kind of saying in that kind of monotone uh, vocal that Kurt does. And then, you know, at the end, he just starts shouting it, you know, and just go into town with it. Um, and the speed, the tempo starts picking up in that last verse and everything. And just amazing, amazing song. One of my favorite Nirvana songs of all time. Very underrated track, um, I think. Then we got Stay Away, which is another really upbeat, fast-paced one. You got the fast drumming kicking it off there. Probably one of my uh, least favorites off here. I mean, it's real, real simple. Um, I mean, it sounds like it could be something off of a, off of Bleach, maybe, you know. And, and I, I could say that for Territorial Pissings as well. Both those kind of, they're probably some of the heaviest ones on here. Um, but Stay Away is definitely just such a simple song. Um, I, I mean, I, I do like the verses a lot. It, it, it's kind of like a, a case with Lithium, right? Where the chorus is almost like too simple uh, to, for me and just kind of too basic there for me that the verses kind of steal the show. So that, that, that's where, that's where I'm kind of at with Stay Away. Good song though, for sure. Then we've got... The second last one here, On a Plane, another just top tier one. I love, love, love this one. Always been one of my favorites. The, the very hooky verses and chorus. I mean, I mean that, that's really the key for this thing. The melodies that Kurt was writing on here. Um, and, and, you know, it just very, just earworms. You know, they, they'll just get in your head. And I love just kind of the, you know, kind of the head bopping nature of this one on, on a plane. And... You know, I love it, especially like the one, the love ourselves better than you, or, or you know, whatever. That that that's a really cool, hooky moment in the song, and then I, and then you hear those vocal melodies uh, come back into play with um, with Dave Grohl kind of doing like this humming, kind of high pitch humming uh, during the chorus, which is really cool hearing at the very end of it of the song, whenever it's just Kurt and him both doing kind of like that humming of the. Of the chorus there um so really really cool song on a plane is another one i think is a really underrated gem and one of my like top maybe two or three off here awesome song let me close it out with really the perfect closer really dark song um something in the way um it's just you know a, a very dark lyrics everything sounds like you know talking about being homeless and stuff living under a bridge um really cool lyrics and stuff as well um another one that just is kind of kind of just very very moody and very dark much like uh probably the, like the this one even more so than as probably not of course of the content like poly being that's probably some darker content they're they're singing about there but as far as like the way the song is definitely kind of a moodier and darker one and I love the cello getting involved on this one that just adds to that emotional effect going on. Very, very cool. And, you know, I, I especially love that they, they include that on the Unplugged um, album. They even got the, uh, the the cello player out for that and everything. But, yeah, very, very cool uh, song and a perfect closer to kind of end it on just kind of a dark and, and sad note. Um, but... I mean, as you can see here, this album is stacked full of massive hits for the band. Their biggest hits all on here, um, all over the place. And, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't even say this album is, like, overrated or anything. Because I do see, I mean, it, it's a great freaking album. I mean, you have awesome stuff from the deep cuts on there that just happen to be some of my favorites. Like, Lounge Act and, um, and On a Plane, 
and you know, and then you've got like the big, big hits like In Bloom, Come As You Are that I really love, and uh, and, and Polly, Lithium, awesome, awesome stuff. Front to back, you're not going to be bored with this album. Even the opener, like I said, that's my least favorite, it smells like Teen Spirit, I've heard it way too many damn times, but, you know, I'm not like, it's not like a bad song that, where I'm like, turn it off, you know, like... And it fits really well on the, as an opener. The pacing of this album is done very well. Um, but anyways, guys, yeah. Uh, this is just an, an incredible album. A very iconic album in the 90s and just for music in general. One of like the most well-known albums, I'm sure. Um, and next time we're going to cover uh, Incesticide, which, you know, I mean, maybe some people wouldn't count. But, I mean, it's got a lot of those B-sides and stuff kind of all compiled onto one. So, so all material that's not on other albums. So, I'm going to go ahead and count that thing. And we can get that counted in the rankings as well. Now, I mentioned the Unplugged album here. Um, that, it'll be much like the Alice in Chains ranking we did, you know. Uh, I, I reviewed the Unplugged album, but I didn't include it um, as a part of the ranking. Because I think it's worth talking about. That's, you know, the, the Unplugged is such a big moment in their career much like it was Alice in Chains so we're going to review it but I don't think it's really fair to count it in the rankings as most of it is just acoustic renditions and everything um but so that's kind of how that goes and of course In Utero will be included as that's their actual you know other big studio album but yeah guys uh let me know what you think about this album maybe some of your history with this album and everything uh, I'm sure uh the majority of you have probably have heard at least some point in your life if not Hey, pop it on because you you will probably have your mind blown, especially if you've never heard this album before. It, it'll have that lasting effect on you for sure. Um, so yeah, guys, let's talk about Nirvana's Nevermind down there in the comments. And like, subscribe, and I appreciate it, guys. Thanks.